video will cover how to add, edit, and delete devices in the Factory Talk Policy Manager. So there's a couple of places that the user can do these things. One of them is uh, at the device table. So the device table will show you all the devices that are in your model. So currently there are no devices in the model. The user can add devices three different ways. One is that the user can discover devices by browsing the network. The second is for the user to manually add a device. And the third is to add a range of devices. So we'll start with discovering devices. By clicking on this, it will open a dialog where the user can browse the network. And within that network, the user can add these devices. You can see that some of these devices have an icon next to them. If they have an icon that is a gray shield, that represents the device is SIP security capable, but it does not have any security configurations on it yet. And then there's the icons with the shield that is green with a check mark. Those are SIP security capable devices that have received security configuration already. So they are secure and good to go. The user can add one or multiple devices at a time. So you can see you can select multiple devices and click add. And the dialog stays open to make it easier for the user to keep on adding devices that they want to put into the model. And we can whoa, find some additional. We can add this L85 and we'll be done. So you can see now that all these devices we've added from Discovery are now in the model. When adding to the device table, devices are unassigned. They're not placed into a zone yet. And you can see all the properties here. And when a device is added, you see its device's property here. It gets its name that's been discovered, catalog number, from our revision, whether it's security capable or not. That's all retrieved from the information received from Discovery. And then the user can click on the pencil icon to see port information. So that includes the port name, the driver path, and the IP address. And also this is where the user can assign the device to a different zone. So you see here, you can click on zone three and the device has been placed into zone three. Another way to add a device is to manually add it. This is done in case that you don't find a device by discovering, or maybe you're offline, you can't discover at the moment. You can filter through this list by entering like 1756 to find devices that match that criteria, or you can browse the different categories to find the device that you're looking for. So in this case, we're going to add an L85. Click on it, and you can click Add. And here again, you see the device's property information that the user can change. And they can edit the port information. The users provide a default IP address, but they'll want to enter in the actual IP address here. And then again, they can assign it the zone it should belong in. The third way to add a device is to add a range. So with a range, you have a start IP address and an end IP address that you can see here. The idea of the range is that instead of adding multiple devices over and over again, if you have devices within a range, you can just put a range in. The limitation of the range is only for it only uses trusted IP authentication, also referred to as whitelisting. So you can't apply security configuration to devices within that range. And also that range can't contain other IP addresses that are already in the model. So for example, if I change this to a one, you can see that devices are here and we get an error back. So the range must be unique and not overlap. So the device table is one place that you can add devices. The second place you can add devices is the zones. So within a zone, you have the same capabilities of discovering devices, adding devices, or adding a range. What happens in this instance is if you add a device from any of those methods, you see here, it will be automatically assigned to that zone. That way you don't have to deal with adding all your devices and then going through and assigning them later on but both workflows work for the user. Now when it comes to editing a device, you can click on a, any device and you will get its port properties here. And you can see here for SIP security capable devices, they have a few additional properties. They have Ethernet driver name, an IP address, zone assignment, and the ability to disable TCP ports. These 
disablement is inherited from a zone. When it is a non-subsecurity capable device, let's find one of those here, you see that the properties are different. You don't have the Ethernet uh, driver name field, and you don't have the ability to disable TCP ports. And that's because the device isn't subsecurity capable, and you just don't have those capabilities with it. And if you want to edit device information, then what you can do is you can click next to the device name, and you have the access to the device properties, where you can change the catalog number, or a firmware revision, or other attributes for that device. You can get the same information if you go to a zone and you click on a device there. The same properties that you can see here, you got your port properties, and you can click on the pencil of the device to get to the device property. Now if you want to delete a device, you can do that within a zone by clicking on a device and clicking delete. Or you can go to a device table and click delete. If a device has already been deployed to, and you then delete it from the model, it will show up in this table of deleted devices. This will get cleared out once you deploy. So this is just to inform the user you've deleted some devices that need to have the security configuration cleared or will affect other devices. That covers how to add, edit, and delete devices in the policy manager.